Hi, it's Tom here from FDS and uh, today we are going to explore the minefield that is Nerf modded motors and we're looking specifically at motors for flywheel mods in this instalment and there's been a lot of discussion about this on various platforms um, I'm indebted to the work of a number of Australian modders for pioneering the 130 solutions and uh, those people I'll try and credit as I go so level one mod the stock motor First thing, these are inductors, not resistors, and if you're doing just a very, very basic removal of your thermosistor um, or sticking in two truss fires or something similarly noobish, you don't need to unsolder these. There's no performance gain in removing them until you get up to better wiring and better um, packs because they are quite happy to take the current from most of the common rubbish mods. So if you just want to clean your circuit up, and you're going to leave all the thin rubbish wire in then you don't need to mess with these if you're removing them uh, if you're doing them on the rapid strike for god's sake don't break the circuit board off the top circuit board snaps like that into the middle and then you must unsolder these tags if you break the tags or if you want a better stock motor you need one of these that's a carbon brush 130 and you can take the brush pack out of these now what you do is you remove the can and the end bell by pushing this tag outwards taking the end bell off and then you remove the brush pack from in here and then you can put your brush pack from your cheap generic carbon brush these are no good for actual use because they either are too low uh, torque or they get too hot so don't worry about using them for anything but just take the brushes out and these are a pair of strife motors strife motors and rapid strike motors are different the rapid strike motors are a slightly hotter wind so it's always worth bearing in mind that if you put those in a rapid strike they're not going to be as good so it's better to just replace the broken brushes and that carbon brush will give you a longer life so there's how you do the carbon brushes that moves us nicely on to the next solutions which are kind of like level two and level three after this point so once you've played with that rewire so there's your next level two mod is rewiring and you need to do that properly, use decent materials, don't cheap on it, and don't use the crap that comes with the blaster. You can get away with the switch for 2S, um, but anything else you're going to want a micro switch. So we're moving on to 2S motors, and uh, that brings us to this, which is the Michel motor. And uh, Michelle is a modder on our Nerf, which is Reddit's Nerf page. She's done some really nice work on these. She's done a very thorough chrono test of them, and um, those are her discovery. So I salute her for that and uh, they are a 2S 6 volt motor and they produce 105 to 110 feet per second which is pretty good um, at 2S I've not got so close to that with anything else you've had to go to 3S with the stock motors to get anywhere near that that brings us to the Black Dog which is an Aussie motor and this is available from um, Greg McCracken on Facebook I don't know which Nerf Facebook pages he runs but um, these are one of his that he found off by China it's called a Black Dog because that's the translation from Chinese and those you can see are a black anodized finish. They're kind of like a zinky sort of finish, black zinky kind of finish. And those, I suspect, are similar to these. So we'll see what happens with those. I'm going to test them. I must thank that Russian Merc off of uh, Nerf Reddit for sending me those. It's really kind of him to send me those at his expense. He's a real gentleman. And I will be testing those and then sending them back. So the third option for 130s is a 3S motor, and it's the Falcon. I don't have one here and um, because I don't own a 3S battery pack, so I haven't bothered buying any yet. I will get those under the Chrono at some point, but Nerf Armourer has done some good tests on the Falcons, and uh, there's a couple of YouTube sites, which I'll link you to in the description box for those, uh, to show you what those are like. And they do about 115 feet per second, and I've seen some very clever calculations by clever Australian engineering types who show that their, their argument is they produce enough torque uh, for Nerf and they're fine even though the torque figure is half that of the big block option. Big block starting off with the uh, 180 SH3240 which is this is a Zinke motor and he is now out of stock of these so you're not going to find them in that form but that's the bare form and that was the cheapest way to get them. The only way to get them at the moment is to buy these and um, this is normally it has a pinion on the end and if I just put this pinion back on now they're normally a little bit further down but I'll show you how to remove them um, all you need to do is just pop your pop your needle nose pliers underneath gently push down and it's just a friction fit you don't need a gear puller for this but do be careful and it'll just pop off take the screws out and she's good for nerf and then if you want to take off the RF suppression equipment you can you can leave it on they run on 2S in um, most of the RC cars anyway so this is the original blade type motor as found by Coop 
um, when he started doing them. It is that motor underneath. It's the same motor, it's just got a sticker over the, uh, over the spec sheet. So it's even got the same manufacturer's sticker on. So these are now currently the only way to get those 3240s. Those do produce ridiculous torque. They can run on 3S. You can get 750 rounds a minute stable out of them. And the snap time on those is really good. That's what's in the tack mod, to Rook's tack mod, for those of you who've seen his snap test video. Now we move on to replacement options for those. And uh, you can see these have fairly good magnets. And this is a Nerf War 180 found by UK Nerf War. And this has a 36K um, free running speed at 6 volts, which is slightly higher actually than the 3240. And the torque characteristics are fairly similar. So these have a long shaft which is both good and bad. It's good because you can trim it exactly to length so it fills the whole of your, um, fly, uh, the whole of your flywheel, which will be good because it will help with things like ravenflies. They're a little bit loose. Now, the only way you can cut these is with a high-speed cutting disc on something like a Dremel or on a grinder. You can't really cut them with a saw because you will damage the um, shaft because you'll have to grip it in order to cut it. So, and I don't like getting any swarf into this area, so you should always tape it and then just cut it clean after you've marked it. So that's the downside about those, but they've got good magnets, not tested yet. So we'll see whether they're all bark and no bite um, compared to the 3240. And then finally we have the Extreme 180, which is kind of a top tier motor really. Um, they produce far more torque than you really need. Um, they're 25% more torque than a standard 3240 and um, they produce ridiculous amounts of um, top end speed and they're very loud. They're a good motor if you like shock and awe and also if you like to be able to replace components like the brush pack really easily these are great because you can get all the bits. This is an SE, the current edition is a Pro and those are slightly more expensive. These are five dollars for a pair which is really good. I've seen them for about five to eight. Um, these obviously are a little bit more especially now you're having to buy the blade ones because they always cost more. They're about 8 to $9. And then these are cheap. I uh, don't know what the price is on these. So these are slightly more expensive, but you're getting a lot higher spec. They have a neodymium magnet. Now, I don't know if you can see this. That's quite a powerful magnet. So you do have to watch out for things like back EMF with these. If you're using them with electronics, then they need a flyback diode and a whole load of other things to stop them blowing your Arduino to pieces with back EMF. So those are a good motor and that brings us to our final selection which is a 1S motor. This is the Tamiya Torque Tuned and uh, Searing Phoenix over on uh, Reddit again has been using these and um, he, uh, he's a strong advocate for these as a motor. The Torque Tuned I think is the best one out of all of these little, t little motors. You have Mac Dashes and Mac Dash Pros, Hyper Dashes and a whole load of more expensively spec versions but the basic Torque Tuned I feel offers the best characteristics for getting through all of the um, different um, things that we need from Nerf. You can see it's made by Mabushi, the same as these ones. So you've got some real nice, you've got some real nice little specs in there. Not tried it, need a 1S pack. If you go over four volts with this, it goes bang. So you can use uh, three nickel metal hydride AA cells, get good high discharge ones. You can use three of those with one of these, or you can use a 1S pack. And these come from the world of RC racing and they're not a bad little motor. So that's your 1S motor. Hopefully that will give you an idea of what you need um, to get out of your motors and then you have to match those to your packs. Obviously a big 180 like this, the SE, is going to need a higher discharge. This is a 40C discharge and then a lot of the other ones will happily sit at the 30 to 40C discharge rate and those you can get in very small sizes to go in the strife.